And some of the most famous people on TikTok are the Demelios. And I've noticed over the last couple months that I've seen a lot of Demelio hate out there. There's a lot of Demelio hate on the internet for different reasons. A lot of people are hating the Demelios. You know, they call them spoiled white girls and all this stuff. Uh, and then other people are hating the Demelios because of the fact that, well, they say that there are no, you know, uh, that the Demelios take away from black and people of color creators who are doing incredible things, which might be sort of valid hate. But I want to talk about the Demelios for a second. Okay. So those of you that don't know who the Demelios are, Charlie Charlie Demelio is the world's most famous TikToker, um, probably, right? She has over a hundred million followers on the app. She basically got famous by doing these little TikTok dances and they sort of, you know, got really viral and hot during quarantine when everybody was stuck at home. And eventually, you know, she got so much of a following and an opportunity that her family was basically asked to move out to LA to which they accepted. And now, you know, they're chilling in LA, um, uh, with Charlie having tr a tremendous amount of opportunity. Okay. And this came up again for me because I was going through Hulu one day, just trying to find something to watch. And I came upon the Demelio show in my recommendations. It was something I'd been avoiding for a while because of the fact that like, I was afraid that it would be something like the keeping up with the Kardashians type thing, you know, where it was like, you know, making big deals out of this most minuscule problems. And also, you know, just like very rich people things like, Oh my God, I lost my diamond earring in the ocean. Like, I don't know what to do. Like, I don't give a fuck. I really don't care about any of that. So I was thinking to myself, I was like, okay, let me give this a shot. Let's see what it is. And honestly, I sat back and I watched the first couple episodes of this show. I didn't watch the whole thing because honestly, it doesn't really interest me that much. The D'Amelio family isn't like, you know, the and like the whole concept of like following a family has never really interested me in a show that much. But I watched the first couple episodes and I was pleasantly surprised as to what I saw. It was kind of the anti keeping up with the Kardashians in a lot of ways. They you, you they utilize this whole idea that the Demelios are kind of these social media celebrities to their advantage because the show just felt normal. It felt like I was talking to two normal teenage girls who grew up in suburban Connecticut and suddenly, you know, due to a couple TikToks going viral, all of a sudden are on a flight out to LA moving their whole family out there for this huge opportunity with social media. And that got me thinking about why we hate on creators, you know, in particular. And I want to defend the Demelios because there are a lot of people there who are anti-Demelio. They call them, you know, rich and privileged and white and all this stuff. And yeah, they may have been upper middle class, middle class, whatever, you know, in their life in Connecticut. You know, the dad was like a sporting goods uh, business owner. The mom was like a personal trainer. But I mean... <laughs> I feel really like I feel bad for these girls, man, because I try to put myself in Charlie's situation, right? Imagine you're 16, 17 years old. You, uh, for fun, put up a couple TikToks or a couple clips of something that you've been working on with your content and it just catches fire on the app. And then all of a sudden you have this huge platform and suddenly you have this massive opportunity to be able to, you know, build a career and build a life of social media, doing something that you love and dancing. Right. And but not the rest. The rest of the world doesn't see you like that. The rest of the world sees you as the toxic influencer, uh, part of this social media culture that is just, you know, awful and a terrible human being. But in reality, like you just kind of lucked into this situation. And listen, TikTok could have handpicked her. I don't know about all the details there. And I, I don't think we know enough information to be able to speculate on how the Demelios became the Demelios, right? How they became these massive celebrities. Um, but all I know is that if I was 17 and I was placed in Charlie D'Amelio's situation, I would be just, I don't know. I do not know how I would have acted. Um, I, it's a tricky situation to be in. Like at, for any child, for not for any child, for any young person, for any person to just go from living your normal life where you're relatively unwatched, you can kind of do whatever you want. You can skate by to suddenly every single action of yours is being put out on the internet. You break up with someone, everybody in their mother knows about it. You hit a freaking Nick stick outside a store in LA, boom, half the world knows about it. Like, oh, sorry. <laughs> I hit my computer. What the hell? What the hell? I don't, I genuinely don't understand it. I really don't get it. And I don't understand this hate that we have for creators. It is just, 
it's absolutely mind-boggling. Listen, I get the hate with Logan Paul, right? Like, oh, Suicide Forest, like that shit isn't, you know, it wasn't disrespectful and all this stuff. Like, I get that. And I think Logan Paul has done a lot of reflecting in time and he's fine now, I presume, right? He's learned from that mistake. But you look at the TikTokers, right? These are the TikTokers that get the most hate, in my opinion. Charlie D'Amelio, Dixie D'Amelio, Addison Ray, um, Bryce Hall, Noah Beck, uh, and a couple other people. They don't really do much. They kind of just make their own content. They live their lives. They talk a lot of shit. Chase Hudson is also in that conversation. They talk a lot of shit. You know, they're they're very white. But like, okay. They don't bother me. I may not fuck with their content that heavy, but why should we like tell Bryce Hall like, oh, you deserve to fucking die in a hole, you little whore. Or like Charlie D'Amelio, like you're just a white fucking whore. Fuck you. Like, why is that hate deserved? They don't do anything. They just make their content. They're trying to make money like the rest of us and they're trying to live their lives and they're just capitalizing on this opportunity that they have 100 million followers on an app. I don't understand why people hate. And the thing I really liked about this Demelio show that I was watching on Hulu was that it was very authentic. It showed these two girls like breaking down over the social media hate and just it really showed like the it gave you kind of an inside glimpse into like what it's like to be on the other side, you know. I consider myself and a lot of other people who are, you know, on the internet haters. We are, you know, the passive haters. We we live our lives. We post a comment that takes 30 seconds out of our day, but we don't really get to see the other side, which is receiving that hate. And Charlie, and I, you know, I'm a very small time creator, right? Like I, you know, I've started posting on TikTok. I have like 36 followers. I don't have very many followers on IG either, but I'll get like a couple hate comments here and there and I'll get a couple people in my DMs kind of mad about stuff and like it doesn't affect me. But I think about it from my perspective and I'm like, okay, if I get a couple of those DMs, imagine what Charlie D'Amelio gets on a daily basis. She gets a hundred and hundred trillion X what I get. And, you know, seeing hate upon hate upon hate upon hate freaking sucks you also get some positive comments too there are a lot of people with a lot of love out there and i love those people they're my favorites right but the hate is just very strong and it's in your face and it's right there and you see it and that sucks and that's the worst it's just it's not fun to watch and you know i i'm just very uh I'm just, when I tell people, like, uh, there are a lot of people that really, I'm just, uh, they're very quick with their tongue when it comes to talking about specific celebrities. And I think particularly the D'Amelios. And they're like, they're white, they're just rich, you know, the only reason they're famous is because they're white and all this stuff. And it's like, you don't think these girls question why they're famous all the time already? Like, do you really think your comment is like a original thought that they've not had in their brains? Like, you're just amplifying their mental health issues, really. I mean, when you post comments like you're musty, you're crusty, you're a whore, all this shit, like it doesn't help. It doesn't help anybody's case. It doesn't help your case because you're still angry about it. And it doesn't help their case because they're, you know, receiving this, these terrible things that you're saying. So here's what I have to say. The next time any of you guys sees a TikTok and you really don't like this TikToker for whatever reason, whether it be a projection of your own insecurities or hate coming from something that they've done, hold on for a second. Just hold on for a second. Before you type some nasty comment into the internet, just hold off. Hold off. Take a deep breath. (sighs) Relax. And then like you realize, oh crap, this isn't even important. This will not affect how I live my life at all in any way, shape, or form. So I'm going to get rid of this. I don't need this hate in my life, and I don't need any of this. And and everybody's better off. And everybody's better off. You know? I, and I'm victim to this, too. I post some hateful comments. I Hateful. I don't post, like, you know, like, just people, like, blah, 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 like, are whores and sluts and all that crap. But, like, you know, I'll post, like, your kind of snarky comment and even then i think about it sometimes i'm like damn like i posted about you know jimmy garoppolo on my twitter uh is he gonna see it and just you know break down because of my comment because of my hate am i a hater am i a hater i question my hate all the time i'm like i have to you have to toe the line i think is being a podcaster who talks about current events like you have to toe the line between being a hater and being someone who's just a fan 
And it's just like finding that kind of middle ground is very tricky. Um, particularly when you're someone who is very, you know, quick with the tongue and can critique someone with a couple of words. So you got to watch your language uh, in a lot of instances, but here's what I'll say about the Demelios. I really like them. They seem like a very nice family. If I were to meet them in real life, I would, you know, love to hang out with Charlie Demelio. She seems like she's a chiller. She's a very relatable personality. If you watch the show, she just seems like a normal teenage girl. Uh, Dixie seems cool too. There are a couple, you know, things that I don't like about them. Uh, in that, like, we just wouldn't get along because they're just, you know, fashion and all this stuff that I'm just not very into. So I don't think we'd have very many common interests, but I think she, they're chill. I don't see any problems with them. But yeah, that's what I say about the Demelios. They're cool. They seem chill. And yeah, same with most TikTok creators. I feel like they're just trying to make a bag. And I respect that. And we just got to stop hating. And we got to def- like, there should be more defenders of these people because they're not bad inherently. And uh, we need to be better. We need to be better as a social media generation. We need to be better.